In this video, it's a short video, we're going to talk about functions of random variables. In a previous video, we talked about random variables, what they are, and random variables, if you'll remember, are all of the possible outcomes in a sample space. So if we're, we say, what's the random variable associated with rolling a six-sided die? That's all the possible outcomes, one through six, one, two, three, four, five, six. If you said the random variable of uh, randomly picking a letter from the alphabet, that would be all the letters A through Z. So how do random variables affect functions? Let's, let's put an example in here. If we use a random variable in a, in a function. Let's say we are a manufacturer of widgets. If you've never seen this term before, uh, it's something that business people often use to describe sort of a generic process, uh, product. So uh, widgets is a sort of a stand-in for something that can be manufactured. And every month, um, so monthly we manufacture on average 100 widgets. And we have a standard deviation on our monthly manufacturing of, we'll say, 20. And that's due to various factors, uh, holidays in the month, how productive our workers are, that sort of thing. So we average month to month manufacturing 100 widgets and we have a standard deviation of about 20. So now let's say we have a function that determines the cost to operate this factory. And we'll say the function f of x, we're gonna call the, uh, the number of uh, widgets manufactured. You'll, you may remember that um, random variables typically have a capital letter associated to, to denote them. So here we have our f of x, and I'm going to make sure this x is capitalized. Uh, this is going to be the cost to run our factory. It's going to be equal to, we'll say, $10 times x plus 1,000. So this function says, for every widget that we manufacture, it's going to cost us $10, and then we have a baseline cost based on rent and certain utilities of a thousand dollars. It's a fairly cheap factory to operate, so I don't know, maybe we're talking in terms of thousands, but whatever, we're just going to use these numbers. Ten dollars per widget produced plus one thousand dollars. Now if we want to say what's the expected value or what's the expected cost uh, of running this factory, it's just going to be the average number of widgets. Essentially, you know, the expected value of the number of widgets we're going to produce and the average is going to be the same as the average number of widgets produced. Well, we can sort of figure out, well, what's the expected value in terms of the cost to run our factory? It's just going to be $10 times 100, which is our average number of widgets produced, plus 1,000. And that's going to be equal to $2,000. Hopefully that makes intuitive sense to everyone. You sort of say, eh, well, if we average 100 widgets produced, then we can just plug that into our function to get the expected value for the function. I think that makes fairly intuitive sense. Now, if we want to figure out what's the standard deviation of the cost to operate our factory, it's also going to be fairly similar. We don't have to worry about this when we're talking about standard deviations. We don't have to worry about this, this fixed variable, this, uh, this constant. It doesn't factor into our standard deviation. What we do have to think about is the slope of our function here. That's $10. And so what it, the, the equation is actually going to be the absolute value of our slope, in this case $10, the absolute value of $10 is $10, times the standard deviation, in this case 20 widgets. And so our standard, the standard deviation, so this is expected, and this is standard deviation. And again, these are for our function. In, in other words, the cost is a function of the number of widgets produced. So our standard deviation is going to be $200. Therefore, we can start making claims about this. Because we know the average and we know the standard deviation, we can say, uh, well, because we know things about a normal distribution and standard deviation, we can say 95% uh, of the time we're going to be within two standard deviations of the mean. Therefore, 95% of the time, our uh, costs to run our factory are going to be between 2,000 minus two standard deviations, so that's $1,600, and 2,000 plus two standard deviations, 
is going to be $2,400. So, you know, 19 out of 20 times, 95% of the time, our costs are going to be somewhere in between here and here. Now, this was just sort of the common sense way to think about this. Um, if you really want to use the functions themselves and write down an equation onto your cheat sheet, something like that, um, you can use this equation. The expected value for a function of a random variable is going to be, sorry, wrong term here. Let me just use common sense language. Okay, I'm <laughs> having said that I'm gonna abbreviate because I didn't think I could write expected value in the space I gave myself, but bear with me. Expected value of the function is going to be equal to b, that's the slope of the function, times the expected value of the random variable plus a. And a is the constant. So in this equation, by the way, this was b, this is the slope, it's the thing we multiply by the random variable, and $1,000 is the constant, that would be a. And the standard deviation of the function is going to be the absolute value of b times the standard deviation of the random variable. So slope, the absolute value of the slope times standard deviation of x. So that's our equation. Well, let's do one more example to sort of hammer the point home. But again, you know, I, I don't want you to focus too much on the equation. I think in a, you know, with, with a linear function, this all should just make sense to you. Uh, the, 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 the absolute value you might have to think about for a moment, but really what you're saying is, okay, we're just plugging in the average of, of the, the random variable into this equation to get our expected value for the equation, for the function, and uh, then we're just multiplying the slope times the standard deviation to get our standard deviation of the function. Let's do one more example. All right, so here we've got, we're, we're an, an auto manufacturer, and we've just produced this new economy car, and we've, uh, we're letting our dealerships decide the, the price of the car. And so there's, you know, hundreds of dealerships out there, and they've all, you know, within limits, they've all set a price that's something around $15,000, and we look at, over time, the number of sales per month. So what are we doing month? Yeah, number of sales per month per dealership. And we track that based on the price that they're charging for the car. And so what we're seeing is the more they charge, the fewer cars they're selling. Obviously, they're getting more profit per car. And if, they're, if they've reduced price and it's lower price than the other dealerships, they tend to sell more cars. This is all sort of, in, this makes intuitive sense. This is actually, this is a, a, called a demand curve, something, it's a term from economics. And it usually looks something like this, where we have um, demand, this is the number of units bought, that will be bought. And over here we have the price that is being charged for the item. So as you can see, the higher our price goes, our demand tends to fall. So the higher, the, as price increases, the amount that customers are willing to buy of our item tends to go down. So we'll go ahead and define this function as um, demand at an individual dealership. Actually, before I do this, let's, let's go ahead and define you know, some of the statistics we gathered from our dealerships. Let's say the dealerships, on average, they're selling the car at $15,000. This is the average, average price charged. And the standard deviation is $500. So dealerships across the country, they're averaging, the, the price they're charging their customers is averaging $15,000 with a standard deviation of $500. And let's say with all the data we've gathered from these dealerships over say a year, a couple hundred dealerships, what we're seeing is a demand curve that has the following function. It is demand equals 80 minus 0 0.004 times P, P being the price. So actually let's, let's capitalize P to 
show that it's a random variable here. So in this graph over here, what we're seeing is um, we're going to intersect with the horizontal axis at 80. Now, obviously, no one's going to charge a price of zero and, and sell 80 cards. If you charge the price of zero, you could sell as many cards as you possibly want. So really, the, usually a demand curve really only functions within, you know, especially if it's a linear demand curve, it's only going to function um, within some certain parameters. So this might be between, you know, say, $14,000 and $16,000. But, you know, this is, this is essentially what our graph is going to look like. Our slope is going to be equal to negative 0 0.004. But this is just a linear function. So let's talk about what the expected value is going to be. So what is, if we just took a random dealership, we don't know what price they charge. We're just saying, you know, we, we, we look at our map of dealerships and we just point at one. What, what do we expect them, how many cars do we expect them to be selling? Notice this is sort of an inverse of the last pro example that we did where it was a function of price. This time it's a function of quantity um, using price. So it's, it's, it's the exact opposite. We point at one dealership and say, how many cars do we expect them to sell? Well, we're just going to plug in. We're going to use the equation from last time. We're going to plug in our average for a random variable into this function. And what we're going to get is 80 minus 0.004 times our average, 15,000. And that's going to be equal to 20. That's our expected number of cars sold. What's our standard deviation on that going to be? Well, it's going to be the absolute value of negative 0.004, the absolute value of our slope, which is, of course, just going to be equal to 0.004. Multiply that times the standard deviation of our random variable. And that's going to be equal to 2. So what we would expect, the, the information that we've got, with the information we've got here, what we can say is we just point to some random dealership and say, what do we expect them to sell? Well, we expect them to sell 20. And we can be 95% sure that they're going to be selling between 16 and 24 cars. That is, we can be 95% sure. This is just because of the, the way a normal distribution works. We can say, you know, within two standard deviations in either direction, that's where 95% of our results are going to fall. Um, it, there's lots of, we're going to get into uh, distributions according to number of standard deviations called z-scores a little bit later and, and you're going to see we can actually say pretty much anything about the number of standard deviations we are away of. So we could say more specifically one, within one standard deviation, so we, we would expect 68% um, of our results to fall within one standard deviation. So we could say with 68% confidence we could expect the number of cars sold to be between 18 and 22. That's within one standard deviation. Anyhow, the main thing I want you to take away from functions using random variables is it's really just two things. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty much common sense. When we want to know the expected value for the function, we're just going to plug in the average of our random variable into the function. Very straightforward. And when you want to get the standard deviation of the function, you just take the absolute value of the slope and multiply it by the standard deviation of the random variable. And that's it.